Member for Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The member from Maple Ridge has stood up and raised some points about the importance of investing in BC's post-secondary system. Now, instead of spending our time on you'd put money here, I'd put money there discussions, let's simply point out that this government is not planning for post-secondary education with a long-term coherent plan. It seems like just yesterday that Jeff Plant had a Campus 2020 report uh, written another lifetime for this government decades ago. It's only eight years old. It presented a coherent long-term plan for a post-secondary system. Honourable Speaker, it seems like this government changes plans around post-secondary education as quickly as they change ministers responsible for advanced education. Now, surely, if investing in post-secondary education in BC has a purpose, the purpose is to make sure that British Columbians actually benefit from that investment, that they're able to access that education, to participate fully as citizens, but also to have the skills they need for the jobs of today and tomorrow. And if that's the purpose, then what good are the investments if British Columbians can't access them? Let me tell you a story, Honourable Speaker, about what happened in my office just two weeks ago. A woman, a new British Columbian from Iran, came to my office. She wanted to participate in the investments that the member told you about. She wants to practice as a nurse in British Columbia, just like she did in Iran. But in order to access that program, she needed the academic English training in order to be able to go to post-secondary school. She needed $500 to pay for the academic English training that she needed. It might as well have been $100,000 as far as her family was concerned. They did not have the money. I spent an hour with her going over resources on the internet, with Student Loans BC, calling Success, calling Van City that have microloan programs. Literally no funding available for her. $500 standing between her and accessing the post-secondary education she need, needed to enter the job market in our province. So instead of going to school, she's volunteering and is currently unemployed. Now this is not a unique story, Honourable Speaker, of a British Columbian who, who randomly fell through uh, and couldn't access the post-secondary education investments. You heard the member list off in, a, in an endless, apparently, catalogue. Uh, it's, the maximum student loan in BC is not sufficient to even cover a first-year arts education at the University of British Columbia. When you count the books, the residence expenses, all the different fees that are levied on students, it doesn't cover the full expense. That means that countless British Columbians aren't judged in terms of when they access our most heavily provincially funded post-secondary education. They're not judged based on their ability. They're judged on whether or not they have parents who can co-sign for private funding to supplement uh, existing funding. Tuition for many professional programs comes close to completely using up the entirety of the student loan program in British Columbia itself. Never mind books, never mind living expenses. The interest starts immediately, by the way, on private sector loans, which is why BC students have the highest student loan debt of any students in Canada, according to the Bank of Montreal. Now, I don't know what the member hears when he sits in his constituency office in Maple Ridge and he talks to parents of kids who would like their kids to go to school this year, how they're going to pay for it, what programs are available, what he tells people who need academic English to access uh, post-secondary education. But I can tell him when they come to my office, I have a hard time finding solutions for them under this government to access the investments he's very proud of, of making. So who is accessing those investments? Is it students from other provinces where governments are more supportive of students? Well, that certainly seems to be the case, Honourable Speaker. Now, I'd encourage the member to spend some time, instead of making long lists of public investments in post-secondary education that all governments of all stripes would make, surely he can make a list of ways in which students could have their access, prospective students, British Columbians, could have their access to our post-secondary system improved because they have the unmistakable feeling, firmly grounded in facts, that the investments that are being made in the post-secondary system simply are not there for them, just like this government, Honourable Speaker. Thank you very much.